posterior pituitary disorders the posterior pituitary or the neurohypophysis basically constitute about the 20% of the pituitary gland so in this section we will study the posterior pituitary uh, disorders along with the uh, certain diseases and uh, uh, the certain clinical manifestation and the management plan uh, which we should uh, adopt in the uh, patients of the diabetes insipidus or the craniofrangioma or the uh, what are the different types of the uh, diabetes insipidus will be discussed in detail in this section so central diabetes insipidus basically there are two types of the diabetes insipidus the central as well as the nephrogenic as the name indicates in the central uh, there is the central involvement the pituitary gland is basically involved in that the posterior pituitary gland is involved the most important hormones of the posterior pituitary are the oxytocin and the ADH. So, what happens that in the central uh, diabetes encipedus, there can be an inappropriate release of the ADH hormone, uh, which is the S S and this is known as the SIADH. This SIADH is basically uh, responsible for the clinical picture of the diabetes insipidus. The increased amount of the ADH antidiuretic uh, hormone uh, results into the uh, excessive uh, results into uh, the uh, extra amount of the fluid retention in the body and then there is can be the dilutional hyponatremia uh, normally what happened that the pituitary gland sends a hormone uh, ADA to the kidney to help to control how much urine is made so when this control is uh, tempered or this control is not intact it results into the increased amount of the uh, urine the ADH concentration because the pituitary gland does not make enough ADH the kidney make a lot of the urine the antidiuretic hormone as name indicates is basically the antidiuretic hormone it's when the signals from the anterior pituitary is not received and there is the uh, the, the, there is no release of the ADA, there is a decreased release in the ADA, it results into the uh, central diabetes insipidus and the patient uh, presents with the excessive urination, thirst, all these are the basically the symptoms of the central diabetes insipidus. So the other thing is the nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. The nephrogenic diabetes insipidus as the name indicates that in this there is no central involvement is there. But the main pathology in the nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is that the receptors as you can see the aquaporin, the aquaporin 2 water channels and there are certain other vasopressin, vasopressin is another name for the ADH. These are all are affected there is basically down regulation of these receptors or the resistance of the, these receptors contribute towards the uh, nephrogenic diabetes in C Peters. This is basically the structure that how the uh, collecting tubule and the other water channel, how it gets reabsorbed and what is basically the phenomena that when there is the resistance of these channels, the aquaporin channels, how it uh, results into the excessive uh, urination. Moreover, the clinical picture of the uh, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus and the uh, central di diabetes insipidus, it is more or less same. The patient presents with the polyuria, unusual thirst and the differential uh, diagnosis can be made of the diabetes mellitus for that to rule out the other diseases we basically perform the certain tests to diagnose the, these are the biochemical investigations are mostly preferred in which we uh, estimate the uh, 
plasma glucose levels, the renal levels, uh, the fasting levels, then the plasma hospitality can also be measured, then the urine test, the urine routine examination. The basic threshold of the human body can hold uh, glucose up to the 80, 180 milligram per deciliter. If this uh, threshold is decreased, then the urine will start appearing in the urine, and then, then the glucose will start appearing in the urine, and it will uh, be denoted with one plus or two plus on the urine routine examination. So we perform the certain blood test as well as the uh, urine test, osmolality test for the uh, diagnosis, and then the specific test can also be done as the ADH hormones levels can be measured uh, by the ELISA methods uh, which can contribute toward the more specific diagnosis or the confirmation of the diabetes insipidus uh, can be done by the ADH levels. Then the, another complication of the diabetes insipidus is the craniopharyngioma. It is due to the central diabetes insipidus or the trauma or the hypothalamus can cause the uh, craniopharyngioma. As you can see the hypothalamus which is the basically the master endocrine gland is can also be uh, affected in this. The trauma can be localized hemorrhage or infarction. Infarction is basically the uh, decrease of the blood supply resulting into the death or the infarct, formation of the infarct. Uh, Langerhans cell uh, histiocytosis can also be there, the polyuria, SAADA due to the uh, paraneoplastic secretion of the ADH by the uh, tumor. The paraneoplastic is that the source is somewhere else and it is releasing uh, the hormones from the uh, AD. H. So this is basically the complication of the diabetes in and The stellate reticulum is basically diagnostic feature, diagnostic morphological feature of the craniopharyngioma. Above, the cell of the cica invades and compresses the adjacent tissues, and uh, it is basically present with different compression uh, symptoms. Thank you for watching Scardio.com.